Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at another legend team and today it's going to be around Tentacruel. Shadow Tentacruel from a Japanese player that I also follow for quite a long time. They are so good at the game as well. So this team is going to be, of course, a little bit more meta as well other than the Tentacruel. You're going to, of course, have very solid teams if you're going to hit legend that early in the season. But this team was amazing. It's most, most likely the best great league team I've played so far in this season. You're going to see think needy all games. I don't know if all of them are actually in there, but um, I definitely have a lot of games here for you today. And so we're going to see here the team already going to be the classic core with Cash as well as Skarmory. I know that's kind of lame, but it is kind of still a very effective core. And basically you're kind of really using the double Scald here. Scald is a very important asset for this team, but also, well, you know what's also a very good asset? Acid Spray. Acid Spray is going to be able to get the shield or the debuff here. Let's see, we want to see the debuff and so the Pawn decides to forfeit. Moving on to the next opponent, we're going to have an amazing lead of Lantern. This is something that you kind of have to also notice with this team. You kind of really have to play around, so you're gonna get uh, you to keep your wish case alive because otherwise Lantern is going to be a very tricky Pokemon to play with. I don't know actually if they're running Acid Spray on their Tentacruel, by the way. They could also run something like Sludge Wave or Blizzard, but I feel like, especially for the Great League, especially for this kind of team and how this functions, um, Acid Spray works the best because Acid Spray is the cheapest move for the Tentacruel. You're gonna get there one fast move earlier than for example a scald but also um if you swap out and the pawn swaps in something like the yeah lantern for example and you're gonna get this out with your tentacruel you can still get the debuff with it and you can maybe even if you really need to align yourself in the two shield scenario with just the debuffs i think it's kind of possible with this pokemon but as you can see as well again we can just go for the acid spray immediately against the opponent they're gonna get debuffed and so as they know this game is over they decide to forfeit Moving on to the next opponent, Charger Bug. Charger Bug is one of the Pokemon that's also a little bit tricky. Again, in general, electric type Pokemon, you kind of have to be a little bit careful about. Here, the opponent makes an interesting play going for um, the uh, Mud Bomb first and stuff, going for the Scald. I really have to hope that I get a Scald debuff. I feel like like there was one game that you're going to see later on as well where my Scald debuff like was insane. Like I literally really had it on every single Scald, but here I was not really that lucky with it. I decided to use a shield because the opponent can go for a Scald here as well. And honestly, I should have stopped out way earlier already at this point into my Skarmory because I need to keep my Whiskash healthy and I kind of need to get rid of yeah whatever the opponent really wants to do here because we kind of need to still keep our Whiskash for, of course, the Charger Bug. And now they can go into that Charger Bug and they can most likely just knock me out with one Discharge if they want to. But I can still try to reach another Charge move, but it does not really work out well for us. The opponent can go for a Discharge and we can at least align our Whiskash again. But it's going to be a little bit tricky tricky because they still have their own whisk cash and they have the charger bug which are two pokemon that are a little bit tricky to deal with for this team and so we are going to be forced to use a shield here we have to hope that this is going to be still a matchup where the opponent maybe does not want to use a shield and we can just knock them out but we have to see about this let's see here the opponent is going to let this move go through i can still try to catch a move here the exit is coming through against our poison type which is going to be resisted which can be kind of nice but they have a sandwich in the back there's nothing that i can do about it. like this was just kind of a hard counter team those teams still can occur but it is what it is let's move on to the next opponent Moving on, we're going to see here Skeledurge in the lead. This is a great lead for us. We have two Pokemon that can deal with it, and in comes a Dragonair. I just usually like to get some chip damage onto them because it's going to allow us to just have a little bit of an easier match up to just farm them down with a Skarmory, and that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So we just trade off a little bit of damage onto our Whisk Cash in order to get the opponent in an easy farm down range for basically the Skarmory here as we gonna do something special here as well. We're going to let this move go through and I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm just gonna give them a little bit of extra farm because I kinda want to get lower so the Skeletor only get one incinerate in. I decide to go straight for the Brave Party after one fast move because this allows the debuff to function immediately and so they don't get two incinerates in against us which is really important and so now they only have one and they're going to have a Dragonite in the back. And here you see the beauty of Acid Spray. If you don't have Acid Spray there's going to be a little bit more of a trickier matchup but with acid spray you're going to be able to just drop the opponent's defense and also still get the shield and as you can see here poison jab is chunking away and i'm still going to use a shield because if i get one more in here i definitely gonna put them into range where i can just farm them down with my whisk cash i let this move go through i can farm them down and this is basically a game already the opponent cannot really do anything about it we can go for a charge move they cannot reach two charge moves in time and so this is going to be it for this one and let's move on to the next opponent 
Dragon Air in the lead. This can be a little bit trickier. I still kind of like to go for one Mud Bomb and then swap out afterwards. Again, you kind of need to keep your lead alive. This is very important for this team because if you don't keep this lead alive and the opponent has something like a Lantern in the back, you are kind of screwed. Like, you're very, very much screwed. So, here, yeah, rather... Yeah, keep your lead healthy, swap out, and in comes now a Licky Tongue. And this is going to be actually a very interesting matchup because you can go for the Scald, and this is going to get the debuff this time around, which is a spoiler alert because I know this battle still because I just did the battle. Um, so I can still go for the Acid Spray, and maybe you can even force a shield from the opponent. We cannot, but we have the opponent debuffed in the attack and the defense, and so we can just go ahead and get a ton of energy on our Skarmory. And this is going to be great as now... Yeah, basically Skarmory with free energy is always great, like it's it's just kind of a no-brainer at this point. So we can just go up to nearly one Brave Bird and they go back into a Whiskash. And so we can force a potential shield here by us going for a Sky Attack because they might expect a Brave Bird and this works out pretty, pretty well. As now, I'm deciding to use a shield as well because it's going to be the hardest matchup for us and it's got going to do a little bit more damage and they don't get the debuff. And now I just going to go straight for the Brave Bird because now they only have one shield and I would take the damage but I'll also take the shield from the opponent, I can swap out into my own with cash. This will allow me to just take those moves. I don't really care about using shields here. They don't get a debuff either. We can go for another score. Do we get a debuff this time around? Let's find out here. We are going to get a debuff, which is kind of nice, but let's see what we can do next. The opponent goes back into their dragon type Pokemon, but you can just go for the full farm down with our Skarmory, allowing us to get some nice um, energy and the opponent decides to leave this battle. We would have easily won this game anyway, so like that was kind of smart for them to leave early. In comes an Annihilate. Again, you have to remember, keep your Whisk Cash alive. So what I like to do here is I just go for one Scald and then swap out into my Tentacruel. We're gonna get the debuff here as well, which is kind of great because now you don't have to shield a potential Shadow Ball because Shadow Ball doesn't knock you out. And so, in comes most likely a different Pokemon. Never mind, they're just going to stay in here. Maybe I get two shields from the opponent, which would be kind of great, and we do get two shields. Don't get a second debuff, which is totally okay, and which is kind of the exact exact odds for this happening anyway, but I still decide to use a shield, it's going to be the Ice Punch, and they decide to go for another charge move, where I decide to use another shield, because I want to realign, it's very important for this team to realign, you have a perfect core of Skarmory as well as Whiskash, and so realignment is very important, you see already why I did this. The opponent has a Lantern in the back, and we get the debuff here, which is really important by the way, which you're gonna see later on most likely, because now Scald, or not Scald, Surf is not going to do as much damage anymore. And what we can try to do is we can try to go for the full farm down. And I think we should be able to just do this. I'm not going to go for any charge move. I should be able to just farm them all the way down. And let's find out here if this is going to be a wise choice. As they actually did a little bit more damage than I thought. We can perfectly farm down. But let's see what they have in the back. It's going to be a superior and we are superior over the superior as we're going to have in the back our Skarmory. And so this game is over. Even if they get to a Shadow Ball, it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. We have basically a Brave Bird stored after farming them down here. And a Brave Bird easily one-shots the opponent. And so there's nothing I can do. Superior going to be able to sweep the opponent. And so this is going to be a good game. Let's move on to the next opponent. Next opponent, Skarmory in the lead. This is going to be a very favorable lead for you. It is still a little bit of an annoying one. I don't like this lead personally, um, mainly because the opponent can just go for a Brave Bird and dip, which is kind of why a lot of people run Skarmory in the lead. But um, we're gonna get the attack drop here, and so I decide, ah, we'll just let it go through. I think it's going to be fine. I doubt that they're gonna have something like a Lantern in the back that would be a little bit awkward for us. But I can go for another Scald, and after this Scald, I kinda going to maybe make a little bit of a mistake. I could have went for a charge move earlier already, forcing a shield from the opponent. Now I'm deciding to use a shield and I think I could have got a little bit more energy here before throwing the Mud Bomb. I was unsure about the energy that they had because it looked like they lagged a little bit before. So I wasn't really able to count it correctly. I don't know if they all came through. But they're going to have in the back a Wiggly Tough and also the Lantern. And here's exactly what I kind of mean with this team as well, that you kind of have to keep your lead alive. You're going to be able to here just have two great answers for charm users, which is very important because the higher you get, the more charm users you're actually going to encounter. I already have like a list, which I'm most likely going to reveal in like a top team video as well, about like people that hit legend. Like at least from like the top 10 people that I saw there, um, I think four or five teams had weekly tough on the team. And so it is kind of important to have coverage for charm users and you have like a lot of coverage here, especially with the attack drop here. The opponent has no chance and they can still go for their charge move if they want to. But this game is over long ago and so we can move on to the next opponent. 
We would have here a regional champion, which you can see based on uh, the avatar item there, which I'm kind of jealous of. I wish I have this as well, but I only got third place in a regional. Actually didn't attend a single regional this season because it was just not really feasible next to university and I'm moving out soon. So moving into a different flat is going to be kind of great, going to take a lot of time. So like, yeah, I'm just saving up some resources and it's not really feasible for me to go to those tournaments. But I really want to go back to them. So hopefully in the future, you see me at some tournaments again. If you see me anywhere, by the way, feel free to just talk to me. Like, don't be afraid or whatever. I don't buy it. Actually, had like recently, someone came up in real life as well, just randomly when I was walking through my city, trying to grind some shadow Pokemon. So... That was kind of funny, but yeah, feel free to, if you see me at a, re at a regional, at any tournament or whatever, feel free to just come and say hi. Otherwise, we're going to see here a charge bug that came and said hi to us, which I don't really like. But I can use a shield against the discharge, we're kind of getting hard walled here, which is kind of okay. It is what it is, we can go for another acid spray, acid spray is going to get the shield from the opponent. And we can still try to reach another one, but they actually win CMP tie, which I did not know. I thought like we would easily win CMP tie against the Charger Bug, but apparently it's not the case. And so I'm forced to go back into the Whiskash, but at this point already, I'm fairly certain that uh, opponent at this skill level knows what I have in the back, and that's why they use a shield here as well. I can still try my best to kind of come back from this by uh, yeah, catching the Exeter here, which is going to be double resisted. But of course, um, they're going to be able to still reach a Discharge, which is going to leave us in the red health most likely. And so they can swap into the Altaria and like Altaria is just very tricky to deal with in this kind of position. We can still go for a Brave Bird, going to be able to get them low, but at this point I can just forfeit. Moving on to the next opponent. Look at this, another Charger Bug. Charger Bug seems to be a little bit more common now. I do understand why this Pokemon is a little bit more common, like I'm not too surprised about the rise of Charger Bug. If you saw my video on the beginning of the season where I basically predicted the Charger Bug is going to have a very important role in this season, I feel like it's not kind of there yet, but it's definitely going to grow in popularity over the next few weeks because like, yeah, there are a lot of water types, there are a lot of flying type Pokemon, like look at this team, my team already dies with a backline against it, my lead is kind of neutral against it, it's not really the greatest matchup in general. And so here we're gonna see maybe a mistake by me, but actually it turns out to not be a mistake. The opponent is going to have a lantern in the back, and so it was great for me to at least keep um, some energy on my um, other one there on my Whiskash, as well as I was able to go into my Tentacruel. And here we can go for a CMP tie, which is going to be amazing for us, because the Acid Spray is coming through again. They had minus four defense, and I have one game plan here. And the game plan is to just try to go for the full farm down and try to go ahead and debuff the opponent's Azumarill. This is a little bit risky, but at the end of the day, it's very likely they're gonna get one debuff as we have two squads loaded. And if I get one, I think I'm going to have a great time with my Skarmory. So we will see here debuff coming in immediately, which is great. Let's see if we're gonna get another debuff. This was basically the game that I was talking about earlier. Yes, we're gonna do that. And so the opponent is deciding to forfeit as there was no way they would be able to knock out our Skarmory with this. Another pretty bad lead for us. Altaria is kind of tricky to deal with but only like a little bit because actually Tentacruel, even though our charge move of a squad is going to be resisted, has a fairly decent matchup here. The thing is, you're going to outspeed it after a while because you generate a little bit more energy than the Dragon Breath does and Scald and the Sky Attack is now the same amount of energy since Sky Attack got nerfed a little bit. And so you're going to be able to outspeed them for the second Scald, which is kind of great. And as they got the attack drop, we can just go for the full farm down. And as said before, again, you kind of want to leave your lead alive with this team, but you also really want to realign. And so let's see what they have in the back. It's going to be the Bastion. And like imagine we didn't get the realignment here against the opponent's Altaria. We would have been screwed at this point. And so they decide to swap into the Annihilate. Kind of fine for us. We can go into our Skarmory and we still have perfect alignment with this and I don't even need to knock them out here. What I need is I need to get them low enough that one squad is enough and so I decide to stay in for a little bit longer here with my Skarmory just to get a little bit more fast move pressure on them and now they should be in range where one squad is going to be enough to knock them out. I know that they're going to outspeed me anyway to the charge move so there's no point of me um, going ahead and try to yeah basically go for the squad before the opponent goes for their shadow ball. So at this point I just have to hope one more thing that I can go for two mud bombs. One Mud Bomb is not going to be enough, sadly, because this thing is just so insanely bulky. So we have to hope that we can still reach another one, and we can, just barely with 1 HP. And so we were able to win another game here against the Bastion. Let's move on to the final battle of today. Whiskash against Magnezone. Basically your dream lead, but in comes now a Pelipper. And I was not really, like, I don't know, I did not really know what I wanted to do here. So my goal is that I just gonna go for a Scald, hopeful debuff. Debuff would be amazing here, I have to say. Please debuff. 
Let's see. It doesn't, and so we're gonna still go into the Tentacruel, we just have to hope that we can still win this game with our Tentacruel. If they go for Hurricane, we can farm them down. They decide not to do this, very smart by the opponent, so we're forced to go for a charge move. So, hopefully this is going to be enough for us. Let's see, it's going to be enough to knock them out, we can still realign ourselves, and I make actually maybe a crucial play. I decide to go for the bait here. This is going to still get the shield from the opponent because they want to be like greedy and farmers all the way down. But also, look at the mud shot damage that is coming in afterwards. We can of course align our whiskers here, but mud shot is just adding up quite a bit, putting them into range where even Skarmory would be able to go ahead and go for some um, sky attack damage. And this is going to be very important. As we're gonna see in the back, there's going to be a Clodzire, allowing us to go for another charge move. This is going to be great because we're gonna get them kinda low. And so, what we can do next is we can go ahead and swap into our Skarmory, and I'm not gonna throw any charge move here. This is just farm for us. We want to go up to 100 energy, so we can go up to two sky attacks in order to go for back to back sky attack against the Magnezone. And Magnezone should be out of energy, and thanks to the mud shot damage there, we should be kind of fine. We will never know because the opponent quits here, and this is going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. What a great team to use. I would really recommend you try it out, and I'll see you then. Bye bye.